So today what we're going to do is make the ultimate media management file stack. A special thank you to all my patrons who without your support this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a supporter of the channel you love. Thank you. Welcome to Technodad Life and my name is Jeff and so today what we're going to be doing is making a stack or a bunch of different dockers all together in one file and this is going to be our media management stack. And so what I've found or what I'm going to start doing is just making stacks of different programs that relate to each other and so that way you can just copy and paste and then you have five or six things that all are interrelated. And so now media management. So basically what we're going to be doing today is the media management aspect is showing you different programs that can change your media, say like titles or add in subtitles, adjust your volume. So things that are commonly done to video files or audio files after that you have them on your computer. Now the one thing about today's video, so all these dockers actually only work on x86 machines. They do not uh, work on the Raspberry Pi. So now that being said, if you do have a Raspberry Pi and you want these programs, if you find equivalents for me, I will make a Raspberry Pi stack, but you need to leave links down in the description below to similar programs for the Raspberry Pi. So first thing you want to do is go to stacks and then add stack and we're going to call this media management. Next we want to go to open media vaults, go down to shared folders, click next to relative path, columns, add absolute path, open that up. Then you're going to left click on that, inspect. We're going to double click on our disk label or our folder label, copy that. Then we're going to paste that into a word processing program. Then do the same things for the next two folders. I'll leave a copy of this file in the description down below or in the comments below, wherever I can fit it. I think it has to go in the comments because it's too long for the description. Then all you have to do is follow this and just change the things that I'm about to show you that need to be changed. So before we do that though, we need to open up PuTTY, put in the IP address of our server, click open, log in as root and your password and then we're going to type id and your username my username is jeff and here we can see our uid is 1000 and our gid is 100. so starting at the top here the first part of our docker is avid mux so this is a simple video editor and encoding utility so we scroll down uh, so the J Lessage, so he puts the same ports on all his containers, so we need to change our ports. So we're going to turn 5800 to 5803. As always, make sure you're using ports that aren't used by other programs. Then we're going to copy our app data path, paste that here, add slash avidmux, so that will be our app data folder for avidmux. Paste in our path to our media folder. For user ID, put the number that you got. For most people, it will be 1,000 on Open Media Vault and 100 for the group ID. And then put in your time zone. And that's the first one is done. So next is media info. Media info is an easy way to get technical and tag data for your audios and videos. Same thing again, we have to change our port. We're just changing it by one. App data slash media info, the way to your media and then your user ID, group ID, and then America, New York, or whatever you need. Next is TS Muxer, and so you can mux and remux uh, different streams. Again, change the port, put down your app data, plus TS Muxer, your media folder, your UID, and your P, uh, group ID, and then your time zone. Next is Dupe Guru, and so Dupe Guru finds duplicate files on your system, Again, we change the port number, add an app data slash dupeguru, our media folder, our UID, our GID, and our time zone. Next is FileBot. So FileBot renames your movies and your TV shows, anime or music for you. 
Again, change the port number, app data file, slash filebot, media folder, UID, GID, and your time zone. Next is Handbrake, and so Handbrake converts any video basically to, to any other video codec. And so for this one, we have to add a few extra things. So one is we change our port number, our app data folder for Handbrake, and our media folder. And so for Handbrake, we need a watch folder. So a watch folder is where you drop media in, and then Handbrake is watching that folder and will automatically convert that and output that to a different folder. So here we have the watch folder and here we put it in the downloads folder. So if we download things to the watch folder, then it will automatically get converted. And then we have a output folder in the downloads folder, which then we can have something like sonar or radar watch, and then that will import that into Plex or whatever we're using. And finally, we need to change our UID, GID, and our time zone. So once you have that all changed, all you have to do is copy that and then paste that into the stack that we already started. And so you need to scroll down and just make sure your spacing is correct. If your spacing is not correct, then the stack will not work. And once you've got that all fixed, then copy that and then paste that into your favorite word processing program to save for later in case you switch computers or you want to redo this. Then all you have to do is simply copy and paste it and voila, everything is up and running again. Once you have that all looking pretty, scroll down to the bottom and click deploy stack. Now sometimes Portainer does not like downloading multiple uh, Docker uh, files at the same time. So here's what you do. How you know Portainer was not able to download it is it will have a red message up here in the top right corner and it will just say, it will just give a sort of unknown Docker image problem. And so if that happens, you need to go to images and in this section right here, simply copy the name of your image that you want, paste that in there and then click pull image. And then it will say image successfully pulled. So what I find if this does it for one image, it will do it for all of them. So you have to download all your different images and then you can rerun your stack and it will work fine. So if we go to containers now, we can see we have our five containers running. And now to access them, all we have to do is copy our IP address, type in 5803 for our first one, hit enter. There's Avid Mux. Copy that, paste, change the last digit to four, enter, there's media info, paste, last digit to five, hit enter, there's TS Muxer, paste that again, put in a six, there's Dupe Guru, put in a seven, there's Filebots, put in an eight, there's handbrake and I think that's it. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six things installed. So let's just take a quick look at these. And so Avid Mux is a video encoder. And so basically you have to get a file. So go to storage. There's our movies. There's Big Buck Bunny. And you would open that. And for some reason with the Docker, it doesn't show the whole pictures. Then you could configure if you want to change that. Copy the video output or change it. Audio inputs, let's change those. Let's MP4. And then you would then change the name of the video and then click save. And then it will start encoding and you can see it will take about an hour and 26 minutes to do that. Next is media info. So again, you click on the music movie thing there, open up a folder, click open, and then that will tell you the media or the information about that video or music. TS Muxer, you would add a video, open that, and then you would change different things whatever you like, and then click Start Muxing. Dupe Guru, you click on your storage, and then you click Scan, 
and it didn't find any duplications, but you can look by music or pictures. Uh, file bots, click load. Movies, OK. Big Buck Bunny. Now for this one, you would click Fetch Data down here. And we'll just click the movie database. And I know for this one, Big Buck Bunny is not a huge commercial movie, so it does not show up. So it usually gives sort of random video things. And then here we can see these are what it's recommending, all these different movies called Sunflower for some reason. We're going to click Skip. And then finally is FileBots. And so FileBot, you would click Open Source. Go to Movies. There's Big Buck Bunny. And we click Open. Then you have your normal handbrake uh, criteria here, but you can also click Presets and just pick one out from there. So let's do Surround Sound. And then you would click Start. So the media stack is the fastest way to get up and running all those programs you need to manipulate either your movies, your TV shows, or your music in the fastest, simplest way as possible. And I'm going to be doing more of these stacks of the most commonly used programs that I use and the most commonly used programs most people use on their home servers. Uh, if you like this video, make sure you like, and if you want the Raspberry Pi version of this, leave links in the description down below or leave comments down below of the programs you found. You have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.